Our scripture reading this morning is on this piece of paper. And uh, <coughs> the, the Japanese is on two pieces of paper. <laughs> I'll read it in English. And then Kawabe-san will read it in the Nihongo. <clears throat> in Ecclesiastes. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. There's an appointed time for everything. There's a time for every event under heaven. A time to give birth and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to shun embracing. A time to search and a time to give up is lost. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear apart and a time to sew together. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What profit is then there to the worker from that in which he toils. I've seen the task which God has given <coughs> the sons of men with which to occupy themselves. He's made everything appropriate in his time. And he has also set eternity in their heart. So men, man will not find out the work God, which God has done from the beginning even to the end. So far we read. Kwape sa.天皇泣くのに時があり、溺れるのに時がある。泣けるのに時があり、溺れるのに時がある。泣くのに時があり、溺れるのに時がある。泣けるのに時がある。溺れるのに時がある。溺れるのに時がある。溺れるのに時がある。溺
Father God, I pray that the words of my mouth and Ken Sensei's mouth and the meditations, the thoughts of all of our hearts will be acceptable to you at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Now in the passage we read, Solomon speaks of the seasons of life. Now that's just another way of saying the times of and the experiences of life. Are good times when we may laugh. <laughs> and not so good times when we may cry. But this morning, let me say this to you. That whether the times are good or bad, take heart. Because the Bible says that God can make something beautiful out of all of those times, all those experiences, the good ones and the bad ones. As we begin, notice Solomon's words in verse 1. To everything there's a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. In other words, there's a correct time for all of life's experiences. And to illustrate what he's saying, he lists some examples beginning in verse 2. The first on that list is the first experience you have. There's a time to be born. <clears throat> now, of course, uh, you were never given the opportunity to schedule this experience. It was done for you. But then the next experience on the list is the last one you'll ever have. There's a time to die. Because you, like me, have an appointment with death that someday we're going to keep. So these, uh, these times are appointed by God. The, but then verse 2 tells us that there's other seasons, like there's a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted. You plant in the spring and you harvest in the fall. Try to reverse that order and you're going to be frustrated. These times are appointed. We can't change them. But you know, many of our problems in life are because we do try to change things. We try to do things on our own schedule, forgetting that God's already made a schedule. There's a right time for everything. Verse 3, we learn there's a time to break down and there's a time to build up. When we're young, it's time to build up. Muscles grow. But let me tell you from 82 years of experience that if you hang on long enough, you're going to reach the time 
when everything starts to change. You have to keep increasing the size of the type on the page. I'm now using 16 point type. I used to use 14. <laughs> and I remember using 12. 32 is coming. <laughs> Steps getting out of the subway seem to get higher. People seem to speak in lower tones. Don't fight it. It's not bad to grow older. It's right at a point in life. God's appointed a time and it's going to happen. Solomon continues by reminding us in verse 4 that there's a time to weep and there's a time to laugh. No one's going to escape the hurts and the sorrows of life. Just ask Judy. In a sin-cursed world, we can expect times of hurt, sorrow, and weeping. Remember when Jesus, God's son, came, he was described as a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. But verse 4 also reminds us that there's a right time to laugh, to be happy, and to celebrate. Verse 5 speaks of our relationships with other people. Tells us there's a time to embrace and there's a time to show our support for them. But there's also a time to refuse to embrace them. Hmm. When they're involved in something evil, it's time to push back, push them away. Verse 6 tells us there's a time to seek. Seek what? Well, maybe a new job, maybe new friends. At the right time, we need to seek. My son-in-law is seeking a new job. He has a spreadsheet with 63 possibilities. It's a time to seek. His job is to get a job. But the verse also says there comes a time when we should end certain relationships or change our job or give up we, what we had in the past. <clears throat> it's right that these times should all come. Then verse 7. There's a time to tear apart and a time to sew together. <laughs> There are values and standards which must never be surrendered. But there are other times when we need to throw things away, especially bad habits and bad attitudes. Resentments need to be thrown away. All grudges need to be cast away. If you've been hurt, 
You need to forgive and forget. Throw that hurt away. Because it's time. And then there's a time to keep silent and a time to speak. For example, there are times when we know something. A little piece of gossip. It's time to keep silent and not repeat it. But there are other times when we not need to speak and speak loudly. Like when we see one being hurt or persecuted. It's time to speak up and defend that person. Notice verse 8 then, there's a time to love and a time to hate. A time to extend our love to someone who's hurting or feeling dejected or feeling rejected or feeling lonely or feeling weak. There's a time to love. But wait a minute. When is it a time to hate? Well, think of the president, 16th president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln. The first time he saw human beings being sold as slaves. He said, he said he felt hatred rising up in his heart. He decided if ever he had any opportunity to do something about slavery, he would do so. It was the right time for Lincoln to hate, hate slavery. But let me add this quickly. Now listen to this. Hatred is for issues. It's never for people. People are to be loved. Hate what Kim Jong Un does. But love him. <coughs> he was made by the same Creator God who made you. Now, in case you don't agree with me about that, let me ask you this question. How could you ever hate a man whom God loves? God so loved some, some people? Good people? Nice people? No. God loved the world. How can you hate someone whom God loves? Verse 8 also surprises us by saying that there's a time for peace. We know that. But there's also a time, a right time for war. We need to remember this as we consider some of the problems before us today. When dictators trample on the lives of men, it's time for men to rise up. 
But, and listen to this, there's a time when war is absolutely wrong. Preemptive strikes that are being suggested by some today with resulting war must be highly questioned. Times, times for everything. And sometimes these times can create tension. That's how I feel as I read these first eight verses, these words of Solomon inspired by the Holy Spirit. I feel tension. But then, just to increase the tension, look at verses 9 and 10. Here, Solomon tells us that all these experiences and seemingly inappropriately timed events in life are compounded by the insignificance of our labor. <laughs> Listen. What profit has the worker from that in which he labors? I have seen the God given task with which he, the sons of men, are to be occupied. People give so much of their lives to their work. And what do they get out of it? It seems we're trapped. And if this world is all there is, we're in trouble. Now you really feel tension. But don't give up yet. Listen to what else Solomon said. <laughs> he, that is God, has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. <laughs> You see, God can make things beautiful. He can make all things beautiful because He has an eternity to do it in. But yet, while he's given us a certain curiosity about our tomorrows and about what he might do with our lives, he's not given us the details of what our tomorrows will be like. But take heart, my friend. Take heart. Because he can and he will recreate something beautiful out of the brokenness of our lives. He's promised to do that. 
Well, let me give you some observations that I have from these verses. The first is that God knows all about us. <laughs> he knows that we don't always get it right. He knows that our tom- timing is sometimes bad. He knows that sometimes we laugh when we should be crying. He knows that we speak when sometimes we should be silent. God knows it all. But in addition to knowing everything that will happen to us, He also knows why everything happens. See, God sees, yes, He sees the little details of the pictures of our lives. But He also sees the big picture when everything will be revealed in eternity. So first observe that God knows all about us. The second observation is that God has created within us a longing, a real longing for something more. C.S. Lewis said that even after becoming a Christian, after becoming a Christian, there's still a little bit of emptiness inside of us, and that argues for the existence of heaven. C.S. Lewis が言っていますクリスチャンになった後でも私たちの心の中にはどこかまたうつろなところがあり空白な部分天国の部分について議論したり,したりたいところがあると感じるということです。See what he's saying? Even though when you become a Christian you have it all, still there are times when you just long for a little bit more. There's a deep longing in our human spirit for more than life as we know it can provide. Deep inside us, there's still a longing for something more. And that more is home. The third observation I have from these verses is that there's some things in life <laughs> You and I will never know. <laughs> we'll never know the answers to the timing events of events in our lives. Now these moments are fully understood by a God who sees beyond our time. But we can't figure them out this side of eternity. And the reason we can't figure it out, I think the reason we can't figure it out is this, we weren't really made for this world. 
それを私たちが永遠を理解できないその理由とは実は私たちが本当にこの世のために作られていないという点にあるんです私たちは永遠のために作られたのです We were made. So listen to me carefully now. We won't understand everything in this world. But living with unfulfilled understanding is a part of life. Some things in life you and I will never understand. The fourth observation is that God makes life beautiful in His time. But as I said, in his time, not your time or my time. Those who live a surrendered life according to God's time, purpose, and schedule will ultimately lead a life of beauty. Let me repeat that. If you live a surrendered life according to God's time, God's purpose, and God's schedule, you'll ultimately have a life. That's beautiful. So, as that preacher in Washington says, the, the audience all of a sudden says, So what? <laughs> So what? What do you need to do? Maybe, 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 see I'm Japanese. Maybe, maybe, maybe you, you and I need to stop questioning and challenging God concerning the events of our lives. And maybe we just need to accept the fact that those events have been planned and scheduled according to his appointed times and purposes. But, Scratch, he will use those good times, good times, bad times, to create for you a beautiful life if you just allow him to. But maybe your problem's bigger. Maybe you lack the relationship with God which will allow Him to make something beautiful out of your life. If that's so, if you lack that relationship with God, let me ask you this question. Today, today would you like God to begin making something beautiful out of your life? If so, 
you can begin this process by simply trusting in his son Jesus for your salvation. From there, your life can begin to get synchronized with his divine plan for you. Yes, there's a time for everything. And maybe today is your time to surrender to Him. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> he makes everything beautiful in His time. It seemed to me appropriate for us to sing a song called In His Time. It's number 681 in your hymnal. 681 in your hymnal. In His Time. <clears throat> you have a plan for me. You have a plan for each one of us. Your plan not only includes the what's, it also includes the times. Help me, help each one of us, Lord, to be reminded of that every time that we seek to place our own plan above your plan. Thank you, Lord, for these words this morning from your word. May they remind us through the coming days, through the weeks and months, that we can relax Just be patient and wait for you to do that marvelous thing, making all our experiences and times come together in a beautiful <laughs> life. Now continue to bless us, Lord. May your grace continue to shine upon us, shower down upon us each day, Lord. And then, Lord, Take us as we leave here today and make us a blessing to the others we meet along the journey. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For eternity.
we have eternity in our hearts. 